Hey guys, let's get more news from SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Chase Young has honest admission about being in Super Bowl. The San Francisco 49ers indicated they were all in on a Super Bowl championship when they swung a deal at the trade deadline for Chase Young. Young, a former number two overall pick, has been plagued by injuries and never got off the ground with the Washington Commanders but came to the 49ers where he didn't have to shoulder as big of a load. Although Young has left much to be desired on the field, he remains a key fixture of San Francisco's defensive line as that's where the strength of their defense lies. Alongside players like Nick Boza and Arik Armstead, Young has more freedom to rush the passer and cause havoc off the edge. Now, Young finds himself playing in his first Super Bowl and he reflected on what the opportunity means to him via Charian Williams of Pro Football Talk. It's something I can tell my kids when I have them one day, Young said. I can tell my kids about this special opportunity. Young added that he's been playing football for so long and has always dreamed of playing in a Super Bowl, and now that dream comes true this Sunday. The Kansas City Chiefs remain dangerous offensively because they have Patrick Mahomes, meaning that Young will need to step up if he hopes to slow them down in Super Bowl 58. Defending Mahomes is a tough ask for any team, but the 49ers are uniquely equipped to give him trouble in the pocket and Young could cement his legacy with a big performance. 49ers, Christian McCaffrey comes from a family of greats, including a CIA recruit. Christian McCaffrey might win Super Bowl 58 with the San Francisco 49ers on Sunday night, but he'll have a hard time ever matching the wildlife and athletic career of a New Jersey sports legend who used to affectionately call him Snowball. But barring something quite unforeseen in global politics, the superstar running back will never be recruited by the CIA to help a Russian athlete defect to the United States. That was the scenario that McCaffrey's grandfather Dave Syme, pride of Fair Lawn, encountered when he was a sprinter at the 1960 Olympics. Syme was the regarded as the world's fastest human in the 1950s, winning an Olympic silver medal, and he probably should have claimed a few golds, before hanging up his spikes and embarking on a second career as an ophthalmologist. He treated baseball great Mickey Mantle, quarterback Bob Greasy and former President Richard Nixon at his practice in Miami, where he had a weekly golf date with longtime NFL coach Don Shula. In short, he lived a fascinating life. But now, eight years after his death, Dave Syme is known for one thing above anything else, he was Christian McCaffrey's grandfather. And, his son Scott said over the phone this week, that would have been just fine with him. He was very proud, said Scott Syme, who was McCaffrey's uncle. Christian was still playing college, at Stanford, then, and dad was sick at the time, but he watched all of Christian's games. He used to call him Snowball, because he would get momentum and keep on rolling. The Super Bowl, with thousands of credentialed media chasing all kinds of story angles, is not the best place to relive a family history. Asked what he remembered about his grandfather on opening night, McCaffrey seemed caught off guard before replying with the most basic scouting report, I remember that he was really fast. That is putting it mildly. Syme, it rhymes with him, not Lime, was born in Patterson, New Jersey, and grew up in Fair Lawn, where he became a multi-sport star. This, of course, was years before the exploits of a high school athlete could be shared around the world easily, so the legend of Syme spread mostly through word of mouth in North Jersey. It helped that two dozen colleges were recruiting him, including an army assistant coach named Vince Lombardi. Ron Giaconia, a baseball player at Passaic High who later played at Rutgers, remembers being awed by Syme's speed. He was the best hitter I ever played against in high school or college, Giaconia said, and while Syme went to Duke on a baseball scholarship and also played football, it was neither of those two sports that would make him an international star. He took up track at Duke because, he once said, I had nothing to do. He would break or match nearly a dozen U.S. or world records during his career, with Sports Illustrated dubbing him Superman in Spikes and one of the most sensational dashmen of our era. Three gold medals at the 1956 Olympics in Melbourne seemed within reach. Then came heartbreak. Syme pulled his groin while horseback riding before the Olympic trials that year, and it was his rival Bobby Morrow, the man who joined him on the SI cover who won the three golds and was dubbed Sportsman of the Year. 
Syme had never lost a race to Moro before his injury, and the what-if haunted him. It was really sad, you know? Scott Syme said. You think about spending four years of your life, running and training every day for a race that lasts just ten seconds, and the result of that can have such an impact on your life. He used to talk about that a lot. He was very disappointed. Travis Kelsey has interesting comments about Brock Purdy ahead of Super Bowl 58. Travis Kelsey doesn't hide his feelings or speak coach talk. When Kelsey wants to say something, he says it and deals with the consequences. For example, he has been very critical and open about intense situations, such as last week when he and Ravens kicker Justin Tucker had a pregame altercation during warm-ups. One of the traditions of the Super Bowl is to have a huge press conference with coaches, players, and other personnel interviewed in a setting that is much less intense and emotional than right after a game. While many of the questions to Kelsey were about Taylor Swift, the game plan, or his own expectations, there was one very interesting question about how Kelsey felt about the San Francisco 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy. Between answering multiple questions about Taylor Swift and other questions that had very little to do with the actual game that will be played on Sunday, Travis Kelsey was asked what he thought about Brock Purdy as a player, and Kelsey gave a lengthy response. How can you not cheer for that man? And the way that he's done it, how's been able to fight through everyone saying what kind of quarterback he is, you can't help but root for the guy. I had him on the New Heights podcast with my brother, and he was just a humble good guy, and you could just tell that he's in it for the right reasons. And like I said, you can cheer for him and want him to keep having that success, just, you know, maybe not this Sunday. Kelsey certainly didn't have to give such a long or in-depth answer about his feelings for the opposing quarterback but his answer shows his true respect and feelings for Mr. Irrelevant, who truly has gone against all odds to become the player he has become. The Chiefs and 49ers will square off in Super Bowl 58 this Sunday at 6.30 Eastern Time in Las Vegas. The Chiefs will be trying to win their second consecutive Super Bowl, while the 49ers are seeking their first championship since the 1994 season when Steve Young was the QB. And you fan, what do you think of the Travis Kelsey situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.